We also see pretty significant trapping of sediment behind beaver dams. Here's a perfect example of a floodplain deep 12, 13 inches of this highly effluent, very rich alluvial material that's deposited behind these dams on a daily basis. Uh, some of the dams here at Catton Branch we estimate to contain between three and 5,000 pounds of this very rich, very mobile sediment. If this wasn't retained by the Beaver Dam, it's very likely moving downstream very quickly into the Des Moines River and eventually down into the Mississippi Delta. This is going to be very rich in phosphorus, phosphorus being the limiting uh, nutrient for those algal growths and blooms that we're worried about throughout the summer months. Really, we're just trying to strike a balance between what the beavers do in the landscape, how they can contribute to some reduction of what we do in the landscape, and how we can cooperate with them. Like how does a normal person not just say, isn't that just mud? Right. <laughs> yeah. So that, yeah, that's a good question. So you, I call it like the marshmallow fluff. It's like the very, it's light. It adheres to itself, whereas if we look at, you know, just kind of a traditional soil that's engaging with plants, we get, we start to create some structure. So the hope is, after these are deposited here by the beavers, plants will move in, reestablish themselves in those areas, utilize those nutrients, store them in their biomass, and hopefully they get returned to the environment and just stay within the cycle here rather than going downstream. Anytime you're, yeah, they, they, every night they dig this out and they put it along these edges here. So they're, they're constantly removing that material, placing it into their dam structure, integrating it in with all the woody debris, the grasses and things to allow it to stay in place. Sweet. That's very cool. Yeah. Let's try to head down for...